Ladies and gentlemen, today, being the day fixed by the Constitution for the convening of Congress of the Philippines for its regular session once a year, the first session of the first regular session of the Senate in the 19th Congress of the Philippines is hereby called to order. May we ask Senator Alan Peter Cayetano to lead the chamber in prayer. Psalm 1, blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that the sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is it in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. <clears throat> Not so the wicked. They are like shaft that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to the destruction. We pray for the leadership that will seek your kingdom and righteousness. For leadership of this country, the Senate and the House leadership in the local government unit, and leadership in every Filipino household. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to serve you in the Senate, for your wisdom in picking each and every senator who will serve you and our people, for giving our brother Muslims representation in this August body after such a long time, for the leadership that will be established today, we pray your blessings upon this leadership, for this new administration, and for hope that comes only from you. <clears throat> may we be like the tree that is planted by the waters, and may we shun wickedness. We acknowledge Isaiah 33:22, which states that for the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, it is he who will save us. Lord God, we pray for unity as we seek your kingdom and righteousness. We pray for unity to fight illegal drugs. We pray for unity to get rid of graft and corruption. Sa pagkakaisa, lahat ay dapat magambag sa problema ng sobrang kahirapan, na malabanan ang mataas na presyo, kakulangan ng trabaho, at mababang kita. In seeking your ways <clears throat> and seeking unity, we ask the Holy Lord God we ask the Lord Holy Spirit for both wisdom and the spirit that leads to Colossians 3.13. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Patawarin po natin ang isa't isa. At ito po ang magandang umpisa ng ating mahal na Senado. We ask for all of this. In the Lord Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen. Amen. Let us remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem led by Ma'am Ima Castro to be followed by the playing of Senadong Marangal.
Mr. President, at this juncture, I move the COMELEC National Board of Canvassers Resolution Number 002-22, promulgated on 18th of May 2022, proclaiming Padilla Robin Hood C, Legarda Lorna Regina B, Tulfo Rafi T, Gachalian Sherwin T, Escudero Francis Joseph G, Villar Mark A, Cayetano Alan Peter S, Zubiri Juan Miguel F, Villanueva Emmanuel Joel J, Ejercito Joseph Victor G, Ontiveros Ana Teresita N, and Estrada Jingoy E, be considered read into the record. Copies of the COMELEC resolution were earlier distributed to the members of the Senate. Is there any objection? There being none, the motion is approved, and I would like to ask Senator Angara to rise to the podium. Thank you. Judge Leader. May we now proceed with the uh, administering of the oath of office to the 12 newly elected senators. We'll now proceed with the formal oath taking. May we request your honors that you take your oath in your respective seats. So please to the 12 uh, new senators, please rise and take your copies of the oath of office. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, please state your name. Having been elected to the position of senator, do hereby solemnly swear that I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability the duties of my present position and of all others I may hereafter hold under the Republic of the Philippines that I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines that I will obey the laws and legal orders and decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities and maintain true faith and allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines and that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Please accept our warmest congratulations, Your Honors. Welcome. Congratulations, Your Honors. Uh, the Secretary now will please call the roll. Roll call of members, the Honorable Senator Angara, Senator Binay, Senator Cayetano Alan Peter, Senator Cayetano Pia, Senator De La Rosa, Senator Ejercito, Senator Escudero, Senator Estrada, Senator Gachalian, Senator Go, Senator Honteveros, Senator Lapid, Senator Ligarda, Senator Marcos, Senator Padilla, Senator Pimentel III, Senator Poe, Senator Rivilla, Senator Tolentino, Senator Tulfo, Senator Villanueva, Senator Villar Cincia, Senator Villar Mark, the Acting Senate President, Subiri. With 24 senators present, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Leader. Mr. President, at this juncture, I move that we now proceed with the election of the President of the Senate. So move. Is there any objection? There being done, the motion is approved. We will now proceed with the election of the President of the Senate. Mr. President, may I have the floor for a nomination? Certainly, uh, the Majority Leader, Senator Villanueva, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, 
it says, and I quote, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Close quote. Three years ago, Mr. President, in 2019, in the 18th Congress, I also had the privilege to nominate Senator Zubiri for the position of Majority Leader. The past three years have shown how he surpassed our expectations and those of the Filipino people, which this August legislative body serves and stands for. With his demonstrated ability as consensus builder, Senator Mig Subiri set the tone and led this chamber towards accomplishing the agenda of the Filipino people, even amidst the pandemic, leaving behind a productive 18th Congress with 500 bills of national and local applications passed into law. Among the top of the list are the COVID-19 Vaccination Program Act and the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act. But the 18th Congress was not the first time he held leadership post. At 39 years of age during the 14th Congress, he became the youngest majority floor leader since the first Congress in 1946. And again, he was Senate Majority Leader in the 17th Congress. He served in both houses of Congress for almost two decades mentored by the senators who came before us, like Senators Miriam Defensor Santiago, Edgardo Angara, Aquilino Pimentel, and Joker Arroyo. In the previous Congress, he was part of the leadership team of the Senate, consisting of Senate President Tito Soto, Senate President Pro Tempore Ralph Recto, and Minority Leader Frank Drilon. Indeed, there is an appointed time for everything. Two nights ago, if I recall, Senator Zubiri shared with us that uh, this is actually his favorite verse in the Bible found in the book of Ecclesiastes, that God's timing is perfect. Indeed, God's timing is perfect. It's not too late. It's not too soon. The trabajador ng Senado is now ripe for the Senate presidency. Ika nga po sa amin sa Bulacan, ang bungang hinog sa sanga, matamis ang lasa. Senator Miggs and several other senators present here today Senator Cheese, Senator Alan, Senator Sani, Senator Aimee, Senator Risa, Senator Wynne, and I became colleagues in the lower house during the 12th and 13th Congresses. We have seen with our own two eyes how Senator Subiri transformed from an athletic heartthrob to a statesman. What strikes me the most is the unique quality of his leadership. He is a dedicated government, government servant, advocate, and policymaker. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, as we have seen the same leadership brand from his parents, Governor Joe Zubiri of Bukidnon and Victoria Fernandez Zubiri of Albay. The way Senator Zubiri handles the stresses and high-level demands of the positions he holds never fails to surprise me until now. Tensions, confusion, and disagreements do not easily rattle him. He can manage to keep his cool, and face adversities with a smile. Sabi nga po ng marami sa atin, dito sa Senado, kung may boses na nakakapagpakalma at ngiting nakakatunaw kay Senator Migs yan. We always wait for him to say, we have just passed another happy bill because it reminds us that we can achieve more if we come together, trust, and cooperate. His legislative accomplishments are laudable. He is the principal author and sponsor of hundreds of laws of national application, both in the Senate and during his stint as three-term congressman of Bukidnon. To take stock of his legislative track record, I say that Senator Zubiri's leadership traits best fit for Senate presidency, compassionate, collaborative, and creative. His compassion stems from being an environmentalist. As a fervent advocate of clean energy, he worked for the passage of Renewable Energy Act of 2008, RA 9153, and the Biofuels Act of 2006, RA 9367, earning him the moniker Mr. Clean Energy. He is also the founder of the Philippine Deer Foundation, a deer conservation project. His master's degree in Environment and Natural Resources Management from the University of the Philippines Open University firmly deepened his causes for these issues and evidence his commitment to lifelong learning. His collaborative skills come from the value he appro appropriates for cooperatives. We call him the father of the new cooperative code because he is the principal author 
and sponsor of Republic Act Number no. 9520 or the Philippine Cooperative Code of 2008. His investment in the growth of the cooperative sector carried over to the 17th and 18th Congresses where he chaired the Committee on Cooperatives. His creativity flows from being an entrepreneur and an athlete. He is the chairman and president of the Philippine Eskrima Kali Arnis Federation, the National Sports Association for Arnis. Under his leadership, PECA was responsible for training and supporting the Philippine National Arnis team. PECA earned a record 14 gold medals in the 30th, 30th Southeast Asian Games. While our previous Senate president is a multi-awarded bowler, our next Senate president is a gold medalist at the 1989 World Arnis Championships. Pero wag po kayong mag-alala, dahil kahit ang mga issue na hindi madadaan sa debate, may mga issue ganon, hindi po ito idadaan ni Senator Mig sa Martial Arts at Arnis. This institution must serve the Filipino people. And with Senator Zubiri at its helm, steering and charting its course, it can do much more. Ang institusyong ito ay saksi mula pa noong 1916 na nasa taong bayan ang totoong kapangyarihan. Isang bagay na malinaw kay Senator Zubiri na nabana, nabanaag natin sa kanyang mga naipasang mga batas. Mga desisyong ginawa niya dito sa plenaryo ng Senado at advokasiyang isinulong sa loob at labas ng lehislatura. Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri, my nominee for the Senate Presidency, is a veteran legislator having served in both houses of Congress and having posted perfect attendance across two decades of service. He knows by heart and as a second nature the Senate rules and the ins and outs of navigating the legislative procedures, duties, responsibilities, and bureaucracy. Consequently, and as evidence to what I mentioned previously, are his legislative accomplishments, the various committee and posts he held in both houses of Congress, in how he handled, managed, and executed his duties and responsibilities, of which we are all witnesses. In Psalms chapter 78, verse 72, So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them with his skillful hands. Higit sa lahat, ginoong Pangulo, siya ay isang mabuti at mapagmahal na asawa sa kanyang kabiyak na si Audrey at uliran at mapag-arugang ama sa kanyang mga anak na si na Adriana, Juanmi, at ang aking BFF, si Santi. Kaya ganun na lang po ang kanyang katapatan at pagmamahal sa ating bayan. Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri is the most qualified and eligible among us to preside over the Senate of the 19th Congress of the Philippines. For the above reasons and more, I nominate the gentleman from Bukidnon, Senator Juan Miguel Migs Zubiri, as our next Senate President. Thank you very much, and may God bless us all. Thank you, the Acting Majority Leader, Senator Joel Villanueva. Sir President, uh, Majority Leader? Yeah. Yes, uh, Mr. <coughs> President, at this juncture, may I ask that Senator Loren Ligarda be recognized for the nomination. So moved. The distinguished lady from Antique, Senator Lauren Legarda, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Presiding Officer, distinguished colleagues, Senator Juan Miguel Mig Subiri, who served this August chamber as Majority Floor Leader during the 18th Congress, has demonstrated his ability to lead and manage the legislative affairs of the Senate. He collaborated closely with former Senate President Vicente Tito Soto III, former Senate President Pro Tempore Ralph Recto, and former Minority Leader Franklin Drilon. Together, they guided the Philippine Senate to a fruitful 18th Congress despite the challenges of the more than two and a half years pandemic. Dynamic, hardworking, congenial, forward-looking, there is never a day I do not see Senator Mig Subiri not smiling. At siya ang tunay na trabahador ng Senado. It is my honor and privilege to nominate Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri of Mindanao as Senate President of the 19th Congress. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Legarda. Uh, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I ask that uh, 
Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada be recognized for the nomination. The gentleman from San Juan, Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Presiding Officer. Morning to <coughs> our esteemed colleagues, distinguished <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. As we open today, the 19th Congress, our people expect as members of this upper chamber to keep the role of the Senate as the last bastion of democracy, a revered institution that consistently upholds the national interest, protects civil, political, and human rights, and promotes transparency and accountability in public service. The last national elections was probably the most devi divisive in recent years. More than two months has since passed. We now have to buckle down and perform our respective mandates as elected officials of this country. And as we navigate a challenging recovery from the pandemic amid the resurgence of COVID-19 cases, the Senate needs to steer needed pieces of legislation to build back a better economy. And to get things done, there's no one in my mind that could lead the present composition of the Senate but Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri or Senator Miggs, as we fondly call him. However, if you were to ask me two decades ago what my impressions are about of Senator Miggs, my answer would probably be not the most glowing. After all, we were then at the opposite ends of the political spectrum. I was part of the first family, while the neophyte Congressman Zubiri was with the opposition who was among the most critical of my father's administration. Ngunit, may kasabihan tayo, bilog ang mundo. At gaya ng mga bagay sa ating buhay, gayon din sa larangan ng politika, marami na po ang nagbago. Ang ilang bumabatiko sa atin ngayon, noon ay kaalyado at mabuting kaibigan na natin ngayon. To borrow the very witty but wise words of my father, weather, weather lang yan. As I came to know him up close and personal in the four years that we were together in the Senate, I came to admire the man. When I was honored to be our Senate President Pro Tem during the 14th Congress, he was our hardworking majority floor leader. As majority leader, Senator Miggs demonstrated competence and expertise on parliamentary rules and procedures and was able to steer and guide floor deliberations and pending measures with utmost fairness and direction, effectively creating an atmosphere of cooperation and understanding from both the majority and minority members. Indeed, I saw firsthand how this gentleman works. Totoong trabador ng Senado. He was a true consensus builder, finding ways and means to shepherd the passage of important measures and effectively navigated the so-called 24 republics that is this institution. His recognition as a consensus leader in the upper chamber was the reason why he regained his majority leadership. First bestowed upon him during the 14th Congress, in the 17th and in the last 18th Congresses. And as the majority leader during the 18th Congress, he dutifully stood on this August floor sometimes until the wee hours of the night, and even during the dangerous times when COVID emptied it of warm bodies. And on a personal note, nung ako'y nalugmok, hindi siya sumama sa mga taong sumipa sa akin ang ako'y dapandapa. This shows his decency and respect for a fellow public servant, and I thank him for that. A true gentleman, totoong tao, patas na kausap. Ngunit hindi tayo naghahanap ng pinuno na mabait o malambing o may pakikisama lamang. Ang hanap natin ay isang leader na masipag, magaling, at hindi, higit sa lahat, may alam. And to quote Martin Luther King, A genuine leader is not a searcher for consensus, but a molder of consensus. And in several instances in the past, Senator Zubiri displayed his ability to diffuse the tension on the Senate floor, through his ice cream diplomacy. His amiable personality, coupled with good looks, aminin na natin, artistain, gaya ng mga ibang artista rito, katulad ni Senator Robin Padilla, Senator Bong Rebilla, Senator Lito Lapid. Huwag niyo na po ako isama sapagkat uh, 
Itong aking mga nabanggit na Senator Martista, mga superstar do, taygit sila at mas magandang lalaki kayo sa akin. At minsan na rin siyang nagpakita ng tapang ng ipagtanggol niya ang integridad ng Senado mula sa akusasyong pag-whitewash ng, ng sinasagawang investigasyon sa isang bribery extortion scandal na kinakasangkutan ng ilang opisyal ng Bureau of Immigration. Sabi nga niya, I didn't become world champion in our niece for nothing. Sabi niya sa, sa isang katunggali niya, Senador. Ngunit sa huli, pinairal pa rin ni Senator Miggs ang pagiging magino. Pagpapamalas ito ng isang mabuting leader na hindi hayaang madungisan ang institusyon kinabibilangan natin ngayon. As we face our future with the pandemic still in the midst, we can depend on a Senate leader who can exercise his best judgment, sound prudence and wisdom, one who can help chart the destiny of our nation. Sa kanya mahabang taon na karanasan bilang mambabatas sa dalawang kapulungan ng Kongreso, nagsimula siyang itim ang kanyang buhok hanggang sa naging puti na lahat. Masasabi kong buong buo ng kanyang kalaman at kakayahan upang pangunahan ang pagsasakutuparan ng mabigat na papel ng Senados pagbangon ng bayan mula sa dagok ng pandemya. I am voting for Senator Miggs because his consultative approach in bringing together the best ideas that 24 of us can offer is the best vaccine against gridlock which has plagued us so many times in the past. He is the Senate President we should have in these times when we are under immense pressure to deliver to the people what they need. He is the Senate President that we want to ensure that this institution will be a true workhorse, efficient, productive, in terms of legislating the urgent policies to revive the economy and truly responsive to the needs of the Filipinos. In closing, I would like to borrow a line from the 1957 inaugural speech of former President Carlos P. Garcia, and I quote, together we will meet our common problems and difficulties. With a singleness of purpose together, we will overcome them. And to continue to preserve the independence and integrity of the Senate, I respectfully nominate Senator Juan Miguel Subiri as our next Senate President. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Chingoye Harris de Estrada, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. At this juncture, Mr. President, I ask that Senator Grace Po be recognized for the nomination. A distinguished lady from Iloilo and Pangasinan, Senator Grace Po is recognized. Mr. Presiding Officer, fellow Senators of the Republic, it is my honor to nominate Senator Juan Miguel Migzubiri, the most charming gentleman Senator of this current wave of statesmen, as the Senate President of the 19th Congress. Congress deserves hardworking public servants, and it is my honor to be led by the best of us all, a real trabajador ng Senado who posts perfect attendance year in and out, all in his time in Congress. There's a very thin line between utmost efficiency and slave driving, and Senator Zubiri treads this line wonderfully. We have seen Senator Miggs shepherd priority measures on the floor like clockwork, and that is exactly the kind of dedication we need to bounce back after a pandemic. Like the law he principally authored, RA 11032, or the Anti-Red Tape Act, he promotes ease of doing business and efficiency delivery of government services on the Senate floor. He has served twice as the majority leader, and we all witnessed firsthand his mastery of the Senate rules as he pushed landmark legislation on the Senate floor. And if all else fails, as a master bolero, he can turn even the most vehement objections into reluctant agreement and eventually into full consent. He is the founder and chairman emeritus of the Committee on Charm. Sa sobrang galing, pati si dating minority leader Franklin Drelon bumoboto kasama ang majority. Today he graduates from the front bench to wielding the gavel. I have no doubt he will use it fairly and wisely and for the benefit of the Filipino people. It is my privilege to nominate the most foreign-looking senator but a true Filipino statesman, 
to lead us in the 19th Congress. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Poe, Majority Leader. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, may I ask that uh, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa be recognized for the nomination. So move. Uh, the gentleman from Davao del Sur, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. General Montgomery of the British Army said, Leadership is the capacity and the will to rally men and women to a common purpose and the character which inspires confidence. Leadership, which I can attest, is an attribute that Senator Subiri possesses. I have witnessed his excellence in leading 23 individuals with 23 different opinions on national issues during the 18th Congress. True to his moniker as Trabajador Sassinado, I have seen how Senator Miguel Zoveri passionately worked for the benefit of our people. He was instrumental in ensuring that this august body fulfills our sworn constitutional mandate of enacting laws for the common good during the 18th Congress. Senator Sobiri does not stop working even when he is sick. Not even the deadly COVID-19 weakened his dedication for public service. He showed us his unwavering commitment to work during the peak of COVID-19 pandemic. While there was confusion and uncertainties that time, Senator Sobiri, together with the members of the 18th Congress, worked our ways with blood, sweat, and perhaps tears. So our executive department will be equipped to effectively combat the detrimental effects of the pandemic. All in a day's work of an enthusiastic senator such as Senator Sobiri. There will be debates and disagreements among us colleagues, like every Congress should. Every senator in this chamber has his or her own view and belief. But I certainly know that the leadership of Senator Sobiri will bind us all together. Together in carrying out our duties and responsibilities as trabajadors of our people. Mr. President, as a Mindanaoan, it is with great honor and pride to second the nomination of our trabajador Sassinado, my fellow Mindanaoan, Senator Miguel Subiri, as Senate President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator De La Rosa, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, at this juncture, may I ask that Senator Joseph Victor Ejercito, our comebacking seatmate, be recognized for the nomination. The other gentleman from San Juan, Senator J.V. Ejercito. <laughs> Let it be put on record that uh, Senator Jingoy mentioned him as the good one. They're both good ones, uh, Mr. President. We recognize Senator J.V. Hersito for his uh, nomination. Thank you, Mr. President. As we begin the 19th Congress, we find the country facing difficult challenges. We're still grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic as daily cases continue to rise. Prices have skyrocketed because of forces beyond our control. Political divisions still haunt us, as evidenced by the horrific shooting at the Ateneo yesterday. Globally, the war in Ukraine, the skirmishes between China and the U.S. in our region, and the territorial disputes among Asian countries continue to create uncertainties for our future as a country. The Senate has historically been the bastion of democracy in our history. Those revered statesmen and stateswomen that have come before us led the country in facing their own challenges. Their patriotism and bravery have made the Senate what it is today. They've won their battles. This is our battle. This is our time. And as we go to battle, I'm comforted by the fact that the Senate of the 19th Congress is composed of 24 men and women whose love of country cannot be doubted. I'm comforted by the fact that we will be led by the man I am so honored and privileged to nominate as Senate President. Senator Zubiri has been a big part of the Senate stands for now, a competent, compassionate institution that is always ready to serve the Filipino people in times of peace or crisis. Senator Mix was majority leader in three Congresses, 
the 18th, the 17th, and the 14th Congress, which made him the youngest elected Senate Majority Leader since 1946. This demonstrates not just Senator Mick's knowledge of the Senate history and its rules, but his strong leadership, his charisma, and his self-assured temperament that is so critical in leading an institution like the Senate. Senator Mix is an honorable man who once gave up his place in the Senate in order to defend this institution and protect his loved ones. He is a dedicated and committed public servant who has recorded complete attendance in his 20 years in public service and passed meaningful laws that benefit our people. On a personal note, Mr. President, I would like to thank Senator Mix Zubiri because we have been together in two national elections uh, in 2013. Although we are not together as a team in 2019, I know for a fact that he was one of the happiest persons that I made it to the Senate. Kami po ay maganda ang samahan. We had a very good chemistry pag magkasama kami. Ako po yung kape, siya po yung copy mate. Kapit gatas. And as a principal, uh, on a personal note also, Mr. President, as the principal sponsor of the Universal Health Care Law and the creation of the Department of Human Settlements and the Urban Development, he, when he was majority leader, he was the one pushing me. Lagi niya sinasabi sa akin, James, tara na, ikalindara natin yan para maipasa na natin. Kailangan natin maipasa. Those are two landmark legislations. He really pushed me. Thank you, bro, for really pushing me and be, being able to pass these two landmark legislations. It is because of you um, who really um, made sure that these laws will be taken up in the floor. Senator Meigs possesses the kind of leadership that we need. Strong but not tyrannical, kind but not naive, cooperative but not subservient, humble, vigilant, and gallant. He is a loyal friend and ally, a pillar of the seatmate block of the Senate, who is always ready and willing to impart his knowledge and support to his colleagues. He is a family man, a loving husband, and protective father to his children. I know that there is no better person for the job than Senator Meigs. It is therefore a privilege to nominate Senator Juan Miguel Migzubi for the position of Senate President of this Honorable Chamber. Thank you, Senator JV. Welcome back. We hope uh, brotherly love will prevail in the next uh, three years. A majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President, at this juncture, with the uh, consent of the body, uh, there are no other nominations. I therefore move that we close the period of nomination and proceed to elect by acclamation, Senator Juan Miguel F. Zubiri as President of the Senate. Is there any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Congratulations to Senate President Juan Miguel Fernandez Zubiri. Uh, before we uh, have President. the yes, administering of the oath, I believe uh, yes, Mr. President. our former Majority Leader Senator Alan Peter Cayetano wishes to make a manifestation. Mr. President, I'd just like to ask that the record reflect that uh, I did not participate in the voting uh, to remain an independent, nor will I participate in the selection of the minority leader. But may I reserve the right and privilege to say good things about our so very good Senate <laughs> President uh, elect. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Senator Allen. Peter Cayetano, the manifestations noted. I see uh, two members of the Senate raising their hand, so I will recognize uh, uh, our three Senator ladies. Pia, Mr. Sen President, yes, so may, may ah, I'm sorry, I did not see Senator Risa. So first, we have uh, the lady from, just distinguished lady from Taguig, Senator Pia Cayetano. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Presiding Officer. Let me congratulate our newly elected Senate President. May the record show that I also did not um, cast my vote in favor of my esteemed colleague. Uh, at this point, I would like to remain um, independent. Uh, I will also not um, participate or, or cast my vote in favor of any minority leader. Um, but as I have told the Senate President, uh, he knows that my commitment for the amazing uh, work that this Senate will be produced, will, will produce, he has my commitment uh, that I will participate and ensure that nothing less than excellent work will come out of the Senate. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pia. Mr. President. So the Senate President's charm did not work on you. 
Majority Leader. <laughs> yes, Mr. President, may we recognize the gentleman from Cagayan de Oro, Senator Coco Pimentel? Certainly, the bar top notcher, the brilliant lawyer from Cagayan de Oro, Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel is recognized. Thank you, sir. Uh, now that you have uh, elected our Senate President, I'd like to manifest that I abstained from the election of the Senate President. But nonetheless, let me congratulate my uh, Silingan, uh, Kababayan from Region 10, our leader from Mindanao. So congratulations, sir. And uh, we are all here to help this uh, Senate succeed in this 19th Congress. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pimentel. So the chamber will be dominated by Region 10, maybe? Uh, majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President. May we uh, also uh, recognize and acknowledge the... Uh, I, mean, I recognize the distinguished lady from Akbayan, Senator Risa Ondiveros. Yes, the distinguished lady from Akbayan Party List and the uh, province of, of uh, the island of Panay uh, is recognized. Salamat, Mr. President. Uh, Mabuhi, SP Migs. Uh, together with uh, Senator Pimentel, I also make of record that I abstained on the vote uh, on the Senate presidency, and I'm glad that it will be on record that ex SP Migs was uh, uncontested. Mabuhay. Thank you. Uh, George Leader. Mr. President, may I ask for one minute suspension for the oath taking of our Senate President? Session is hereby suspended. We ask uh, Senator Lauren Legarda to join us to administer the oath to the Senate President, as well as uh, the family of Senate President Zubiri to join here at the rostrum for his oath taking as Senate President. And may we ask the members of the Senate and our guests to please rise. Uh, for the Senate President's oath taking. Okay, I'm Vicky. Okay. It is my honor to administer the oath before Senate President Juan Miguel Zubiri. Please raise your right hand. I, I, Juan Miguel F. Zubiri, having been elected, having been elected as President of the Senate. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear that I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. The duties of my present position. The duties of my present position. And of all others. And of all others. I may hereafter hold. That I may hereafter hold. Under the Republic of the Philippines. Under the Republic of the Philippines. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the Philippines. The Constitution of the Philippines. That I will obey the laws. 
I will obey the laws and legal orders and, legal and, decrees, orders and decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities promulgated by the duly constituted authorities and maintain true faith and allegiance and maintain true faith and allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines to the Republic of the Philippines and that I impose this obligation and that I impose this obligation upon myself upon myself voluntarily without mental reservation voluntarily without mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion so help me God so help me God Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, Senate President Zubiri. We'll now turn over the rostrum to the Senate President. Mr. President, Mr. President, to give time for, for, for picture taking with the uh, yeah. new Senate President, maybe suspend the session for a minute. Oh, that's okay. We can continue. Okay. Wait, we can continue. Yeah. We can do oh, would you want to? Okay, suspend. I move to suspend, Mr. President. <laughs> Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Congratulations. Mr. President, uh, we are ready to hear the address of the President of the Senate. Thank you. Thank you very much. My dear colleagues, friends, guests, most especially I'd like to welcome the members of the Diplomatic Corps that are here today, headed by His Excellency the Papal Nuncio, Most Reverend Charles John Brown, and all the other ambassadors, uh, our dear colleagues, and of course uh, our former colleagues of the Senate, to my family, and friends, magandang, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. To my colleagues, thank you for the trust. I shall repay that honor with hard work as your trabajador ng Senado. To my family, my wife, Audrey, who's always been supportive of me 1,000%. One, one to my children, Adriana, Juan, me, and Santi. To my mother and father, Mommy Vicky and Daddy Joe, I pledge that nothing I do will stain the memory of our ancestors or sour your love for me. It is with humility that I accept this position. I do so conscious of the burden it carries and committed to the work it entails. As presiding officer, I may wield the gavel, but not the power of this institution. That power is shared by us all, by every one of you, and more so our main responsibility of responding to the needs of the people and respecting their will. I say this, my friends, because you and I know that never has the fate of the Senate been dependent on the hands of only one man. 
it has always rested on the collective shoulders of all its members. The Senate has been described as one of the main engines of the ship of state, all of its 24 cylinders firing, unleashing the energy that propels our nation forward. However, this Senate does not merely row. It also steers the ship so it will not run into shoals or storms. It is the reason why we have to keep watch, always. But every new Senate's course is chartered by the challenges under which it operates. Every new Senate job description is written by the crisis it must confront. And ours is dictated by multiple crises before us. Food, fuel, fiscal, and the fading faith of our people in our institutions, just to name a few. On top of this is the COVID pandemic, which, courtesy of a mutating virus, will continue to disrupt lives and choke the economy before it can breathe its very last. But what it cannot suffocate is the fighting spirit of a people whose virtues of hard work, solidarity, compassion are greater than the virus at its vilest. This Senate will meet these big problems with bold thinking and brave legislation, but most especially, and I'm looking forward to this, bipartisanship. In this Senate workshop of great ideas, laws will be forged and from which oversight of those who implement or ignore the laws will also be conducted. And speaking of oversight, we will exercise it not because we want to encroach on the executive branch or emasculate it of its powers. We do so in order to help government, the presidency even, remedy deficiencies in the delivery of public services and recalibrate ineffective policies. This Senate, under my leadership, however, will be one to solve problems more than it would find faults. While probes are magnets for publicity, and I learned this from the father of Sani Angara, Senator Edangara, it is the policies, laws patiently written, line by line, away from the limelight that drives progress. But for us to do our role, we must uphold the Senate's proud tradition of being independent. And that is important because the Senate's independence is a linchpin of its two other hallmarks, industry and innovation. Generations of our predecessors whose names are etched on the wall leading to this hall have exercised this to the benefit of our people. The Senate, therefore, is not an office of 24 receiving clerks for executive proposals. We will improve what has been proposed to us as we initiate our own. We do so not because we are rivals of power or for power for the other branch, but because we are partners for progress. We do so not to compete for influence, but to cooperate for the ways and means on how to bring the nation forward. This stance practiced by all the Senates which had sat before us has been the proven formula on how this chamber has been able to uphold the interests of the Republic and promote the welfare of our people. Our vigilance has purged proposed laws or provisions that harm the people. Our insight, on the other hand, have maximized the gains of our people will reap from laws. When bills are unnecessarily complicated, we inject it with common sense. When bills attempt to overreach, we shield the vulnerable. And when proposed tax rates are higher than what is reasonable, we make them fair or we make them go away. When the suggested spending borders on the frivolous, we remind them to be frugal. And when problems remain unattended, we come up with solutions. Not even the COVID-19 pandemic prevented the Senate before us from making emergency bills like Bayanian 1 and Bayanian 2 evolve into superior pieces of legislation despite having to conduct business remotely because every man and woman in this chamber rose to that occasion. Today, my dear colleagues, we will troop to the Batasan to hear 
President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. perform his constitutional duty of telling us the state of the nation. For sure, he will be asking Congress to support initiatives that will address the people's clamor for jobs, bring down prices of basic goods, affordable food, humane transport, among other relief measures. And when he enumerates them, my dear friends, let us view them in the proper context, that this is not a presidential wish list, wish list rather, he crafted on his own, but a president articulating what the people want. So let us respond to what the people want urgently. And let us do it through the time-honored fashion by which the Senate has acted upon during times of crisis, by harnessing the best ideas from our brightest can offer. So the cures will not just bring temporary relief, but also permanently release our people from what ails them. Acting on this urgent request, I will also allow us to redeem the campaign promises and pledges that we have made. This will be the first down payment of what we owe the people for the mandate they have gifted us with. So let us come up with bills that deliver a big payload of solutions to the big problems of the land, what the people truly want that will improve their lives and not just foggy points for the Senate. Laws that will bring social good, not just social media hits. Jobs created, hunger reduced, inflation slashed, GNP growth, houses built, higher school test scores, and middle class expanded are the metrics that should gauge our performance instead of likes, shares, and views. Legislation must not lag behind the social, economic, and technological curve, my dear colleagues. It also must be ahead of what the people want. This requires scrutinizing the budget so that the tax payments will be spent on things that will go or do greater good rather than to those or to do greater good to those who pay them. If there is one mission that should animate the Senate of the 19th Congress, it is an overriding theme. Then it must be a Senate of national reconstruction. But the recovery that we should work for together is not merely returning to where we were once before. It is catapulting ourselves to a better place than the past. And as we buckle down to work, let me issue some invitations. To the public, let me assure you that this is not only a multitasking Senate, it is also a crowdsourcing one. We value your ideas because this upper chamber will never be an echo chamber. To my fellow Senate workers, to the men and women of the Secretariat, in these trying times when so many expect so much from so few of us, the people expect no less than your hard work and professionalism. To my dear, dear colleagues in the majority, I remain with you in the trenches. I see no perks in this position. I temporarily hold this position through your grace, except the duty to work even harder. To my friends in the minority, I was once a loyal soldier of the opposition. And if there's one lesson I've carried with me ever since, it is that the strength of an idea is what makes it right and not the sheer number of its believers. Let us debate and embrace ideas without regard from where they came from. My dear colleagues, my leadership will be one of consultation. Our output will be through consensus building. And if former Senate President Tito Sen was a father figure to all of us, then allow me to be your brother that will walk with you during these challenging times. Yes, my dear friends, no Senate in the past faced challenges as demanding and daunting as this one before us. But with hard work and dedication, we will deliver for the people. We shall help them overcome. The war against the pandemic is not yet over. The battle in many fronts is about to get worse. There is a future to be won. Let us go to our battle stations and fight to uplift our people's lives and make our nation even greater than before. Mabuhay ang Senado at mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po.
Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, congratulations. At this juncture, Mr. President, I move that we proceed with the election of the Senate President pro tempore. Is there any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. We will now proceed with the election of the Senate President pro tempore. Mr. President, may I ask that Senator Sani Angara be recognized for the nomination? Senator Angara is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct honor to nominate a Senate, Senate President pro tempore of the 19th Congress of the Republic of the Philippines, one of the most respected and well-loved lawmakers of the land, Senator Lauren Legarda. Senator Legarda has earned for herself a long list of achievements as a legislator and policy advocate, all cementing her legacy as a champion of our collective cause for the Filipino nation. As a senator for 18 years and a congresswoman for three years, Senator Legarda authored numerous laws that shaped the policy landscape in the country for the environment, climate action, disaster risk reduction, sustainable development, cultural heritage preservation, and indigenous people's rights, among many others. She is a pioneer. She was the youngest senator when she began her first term in 1998 in this chamber. She was the only woman to have topped the senatorial election twice. She was the only woman to have served as Senate Majority Floor Leader at the young age of 41. She was both a Towns, or 10 Outstanding Women in the Nation, and TOYM, 10 Outstanding Young Man Awardee, in her early 30s. And during her leadership of the Senate Committee on Finance, I had the pleasure of serving as one of her vice chairpersons. She ensured the mainstreaming of climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction measures in the annual budget of government agencies. Climate and sustainability have been lifelong advocacies for Senator Legarda, and over the years, her vigorous and relentless environmental campaigns and climate policy leadership have been recognized internationally. From the United Nations to the IMF World Bank, from Sendai to Paris to Bonn, hers has been a well-respected and highly sought-out voice at the most senior levels of international climate diplomacy, consensus building, and decision making. On top of her legislative duties, she has worked as a UNDRR Global Champion for Resilience, a UNFCCC National Adaptation Plan Champion, and a Commissioner of the Global Commission on Adaptation. She was recognized as a global leader for tomorrow by the World Economic Forum and a UNEP laureate, and was chosen as one of the global parliamentarian champions of the Climate Vulnerable Forum. Alongside these advocacies, Mr. President, Senator Legarda has also vigorously championed our rich Filipino heritage and has worked to promote cultural resilience and the rights of our indigenous people. Through her efforts, the Philippines returned to the Venice Biennale in 2015 after a hiatus of more than five decades, opening yet another opportunity for our people to showcase our identity, our heritage, and our history to the rest of the world. In recognition of her exceptional contributions here and abroad, Senator Legarda has been bestowed the title Knight in the French National Order of the Legion of Honor Knight in the Order of Merit of the Italian Republic and the Award of Distinction by the European Union or EU. She has brought nothing but pride to the nation. So voluminous are her achievements that many seem to forget that prior to entering public service, Senator Legarda first came into national consciousness as a broadcast journalist. Some of us remember her as an anchor in the world tonight next to Angelo Castro Jr. and as host of the Inside Story, a current affairs program. She earned many accolades for her journalism, including a KBP Golden Dove Award and a Benigno Aquino Award for Journalism in 1995, among more than 30 awards. Mr. President, colleagues, for many of us in the Senate, Senator Legarda has acted as both an anchor and a vanguard, but for many of those close to her, she is our tita ganda. She kept us steady amid turbulence, rallied us through tough times, and led the country toward a more climate-resilient and sustainable future. I am confident under your leadership, Mr. President, and with Senator Legarda backing you up as our president pro tempore, the Senate is bound to achieve more and to reach new heights, to ultimately serve for the benefit of Filipinos everywhere at all times. It is thus my honor and privilege to nominate Senator Lorna Regina Lauren Bautista Legarda as our Senate president pro tempore. Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Senator Angara. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I ask that Senator Nancy Binay be recognized for the nom nomination, Mr. President. Senator Binay is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I have the privilege of nominating Senator Lauren Legarda 
as the Senate President Pro Tempor of the 19th Congress. As we all know, Senator Lawrence's mantra to take care of our people has always been non-negotiable, to assure them of essential services and to take it as an article of faith to always see beyond what they need. A seasoned and respected lawmaker for more than two decades, she has relentlessly practiced public service, a truly dedicated public servant. The Senate is a witness to the long list of legislative measures she has championed, pursued, and advocated for. She has addressed the needs of our marginalized and vulnerable populations and has caused the meaningful inclusion of women in the public sphere, supported programs upholding our culture and traditions, and advocated for micro-entrepreneurs who have been the silent heroes of our local economy. It can be said that she is the master weaver of the culture of resilience, not only in the country, but also globally. Mahal na Pangulo, mga kapwa senador, sa kanyang ikaapat na termino bilang senador, minumongkahi ko po ang paghirang kay Senadora Lorna Regina Loren Legarda bilang Pangulong Pro Tempor ng Senado ng Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Ma'am Nancy, Majority Leader. Sir President, may I ask that Senator Grace Poe be recognized for the nomination? Senator Grace Poe is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. It is my honor and privilege to nominate the most senior member in tenure serving this Congress, not, not in age, but perhaps in experience and longevity, <laughs> Senator Lauren B. Legarda as the Senate President Pro Tempore of the 19th Congress, a legislator since 1998 and having served both in the Senate of the Philippines and the House of Representatives, it is an understatement to say that Senator Legarda is an authority in legislation. Personally, I am a witness to Senator Lawrence's work as she was one of the standing senators when I was first elected to the Senate in 2013, and she was very kind to me and served as a mentor. She championed for measures on the environment, climate change, adaptation, disaster risk reduction and management, sustainability, and climate justice. Likewise, she has vigorously backed legislation on, a, on an array of subject matter in the arts and culture, education, employment, and entrepreneurship. More importantly, this lady senator was instrumental in the passage of several important pieces of legislation, such as Republic Act No. 9501, or the Magna Carta for Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises, Republic Act 8759, or the Public Employment Service Office Act, Republic Act 9509, or the Barangay Livelihood and Skills Training Act, and Republic Act No. 9231, a measure that outlawed child labor, among other laws. In addition to this, she became the chairperson of the Committee on Finance in the 17th Congress. During her term, she fiercely led the committee and ensured transparency and proper and judicious allocation of funds. Senator, Senator Ligarda is a kind and compassionate public servant, yet she remains to be strong and no-nonsense in accomplishing her task. She truly gets things done. To this, I'm certain that she will be able to pass more laws that will benefit our kababayans. And on a personal note, what truly binds Senator Legarda and I is 2004. She was the embattled running mate of FPJ. And Senator Legarda has proven her strength of spirit. As she has written as the consistent top lady senator in the polls, it is my honor to be working with her again. Now in her fourth term, I have the privilege to nominate our esteemed colleague from Antique, Senator Lauren Legarda, for the position of Senate President Pro Tempore. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Ma'am Grace. Majority Leader. Mr. President, move that uh, we recognize Senator Bato de la Rosa uh, for, for his nomination, Mr. President. Senator Bato, Ronald Bato de la Rosa is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, it is with a profound sense of honor that I stand to make this nomination. Senator Lauren Ligarda is known to be the lady who leads, 
and I, for obvious reasons, cannot help but agree. Since it is not every day that I get to speak about inspiring figures who need no introduction, I will gladly tell this August body and the rest of the world about Senator Lauren Ligarda. Because she hails from a family of public servants, it should come as no surprise that Senator Lauren decided to take the, the same path for herself. She is a four-term senator, which means that among all of us in this chamber, she is certainly the most senior. Most senior at hindi lang dahil sa tagal niya sa Senado, Mr. President, kundi dahil sa dami at kalidad ng mga batas na kanyang naipasa. She has been consistent in promoting livelihood, advocating for the development of cultural villages, and pushing for the protection of indigenous people's rights. The cultural communities in Mindanao have adapted, have, have adapted her as a bai matumpis, which translates to the one who takes care. There are countless other things and qualities that one can say about Senator Lauren, but I would like to stop there, Mr. President, with the fact that she has also earned the title of being the one who cares Pairing that up with the lady who leads, we get the picture of the kind of leadership we can look forward to with Senator Lauren Ligarda as our Senate President pro tempore. She is the lady who leads not just with vision and with determination, but more importantly, with care. As early as this first day of the first regular session of the 19th Congress, I can already say that it is and will always be an honor to submit to the leadership of this lady. Mr. President, I respectfully nominate Senator Lauren Ligarda for the position of Senate President pro tempore. Thank you very much, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa. Mr. President, with the consent of the body, there being no other nominations, I move that the period of nomination be closed and that we elect Senator Loren Ligarda as President pro tempore of the Senate. So move, Mr. President. Before I act on that motion, Mr. Majority Leader, on a personal note, I would like to also say as well that Senator Ligarda is probably the only member of the Senate now who has come from the 11th Congress. And uh, that makes her senior in terms of wisdom, not because of age but because of wisdom and experience. But also on a personal note, I actually uh, enjoy her company every night. Not because we see each other every night. It's because after I watch the news, I always watch her show Dayao at uh, late evenings, and I always get to enjoy that beautiful show of culture and the arts, and we thank her for that. So, ladies and gentlemen, my dear colleagues, there being no objection to the motion of our dear Majority Floor Leader, the motion is therefore approved. The Chair proclaims Senator Lauren Legarda as having been elected as Senate President pro tempore. Congratulations. May I ask and request Senator Lauren Legarda and her family to ascend to the rostrum for the oath taking. I ask for a session suspended to allow the family to come up.
can uh, we can uh, uh, use that already and place that on the records of the Senate with the permission of the body. Thank you. So we may return the mace. Oh, okay. Since the session is assumed, Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President, uh, we'd like to extend our uh, congratulations to our uh, Senate President Pro Tempore, Senator Lauren Legarda. She wishes to be recognized, Mr. President. Uh, yes, may we to... recognize her. And once again, I apologize to my dear colleagues. A bit of oversight, I forgot to start session, but with the permission of the body, our, uh, uh, we will consider that as already read into the records. May we, read, may we recognize Senator Lauren Legarda to deliver her acceptance speech. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, excellencies, officers, and staff of the Senate, it is with great honor that I accept the Senate President Pro Tempore position. I am truly humbled by the support given by my distinguished colleagues to lead this August chamber, which I consider my home for 18 years. Maraming salamat pong muli sa mahigit 24 na milyong Pilipino na nagtiwala at nagbigay sa akin ang pagkakataong muling maglingkod bilang four-term senator. When I first entered the halls of Congress 24 years ago, I was just a novice in the political arena, hoping to make a change in our country. My exposure to our society's ills as a young journalist led me to take on the role of a public servant, a senator of the Republic, and I have then vowed to work tirelessly to find solutions to our country's problems. That was way back in 1998, I was all of 38 years old then. Today, I stand before you as a most senior senator. Having come full circle with 18 years of experience in the Senate and three years of experience in the House of Representatives. Indeed, it has been a fulfilling journey. But our sojourn has not yet come to an end. Hindi pa po tapos ang ating trabaho. Over the last 20 years, we have enacted laws, programs, policies. We have forwarded, supported, contributed to advocacies that better our country. From peacekeeping negotiations and humanitarian missions to the pandemic of present day, we have continued to forge on our commitment to assist those who are in need, to the vulnerable, underprivileged, and deprived. Sa ating pagbangon mula sa pandemia, Iisa lamang ang ating layunin para sa ating bansa. Magkaroon ng pangmatagalang kapayapaan. Wakasan ang kahirapan. Ituloy ang ating mga programa para sa mahihirap at makamit ang pambansang pagbangon at pagunlad. We have advocated for green development, having authored laws on environmental governance, protection of the environment, conservation of our natural resources having traversed the country and learned about our rich cultural heritage, we continue to support projects that promote and showcase the exceptional skills and the world-class products of our indigenous people, our culture betters. Hindi rin po mawawala sa ating mga layunin ang mga programa sa kalusugan, edukasyon, trabaho at kabuhayan. Ilan lamang po ito sa mga advokasya na sinisiguro natin mapapondohan Nung tayo po ay uh, nanilbihan bilang chair ng Senate Committee on Finance at hanggang ngayon. We introduced and sponsored vital amendments in a budget allocation for various sectors to ensure that the national budget sponsored socioeconomic services, providing subsidies for free public tertiary education, additional funding for state universities and colleges, free health care services in government hospitals, free irrigation services for small farmers, budget for social welfare programs, increased funding to support rural livelihoods, and micro, small, and medium enterprises. 
The pathway towards pandemic recovery is through the economic empowerment of every Filipino. That means supporting our MSMEs, 99.51% of the country's businesses, and are responsible for an estimated 5.3 million jobs or 62.66% of the country's employment, bolstering the efficiency of our health sector as part of our vital investments in our human capital by pushing for the full implementation of the Universal Health Care Act. My fellow senators, my dear colleagues, friends, we have a great deal of work ahead of us. It is not a cakewalk. We cannot do this unilaterally. And for this distinct privilege to work for you and to work with you, I am forever grateful. Thank you for this opportunity to serve as your Senate President pro tempore under the leadership of Senate President Juan Miguel Zubiri as we steer the 19th Congress towards its objectives. Sa loob ng dalawamput isang taon, malawak na po ang naging karanasan natin bilang inyong mababatas sa mataas at mababang kapulungan. Malayo na rin po ang ating narating, ngunit marami pa rin po tayong kailangan gawin. Handa po akong salubungin ng buong puso ang bagong tungkulin na inyong iniatang po sa akin. Umaasa kayo na aking gagampan ito sa tulong ninyo para sa bawat Pilipino. I stand before you now, excited as I was in 1998, filled with hope. I may be the most senior senator in terms of tenure, not of age. And I look at Senator Aimee Marcos now. <laughs> Many of whom call me Tita with fondness, but this Tita stands before you with the same determination to serve you and the Filipino people. Now, more than ever, we have to foster unity and good governance for a free, inclusive, sustainable, and resilient Philippines. Maraming, maraming salamat po. Congratulations to our new Senate President pro tempore, Ma'am Lauren, our Majority Floor Leader. Mr. President, I move now that we proceed with the election of the Chairman of the Committee on Rules. Please proceed. Is there any objection, Mr. President? Uh, gentlemen, uh, hearing none, the motion is approved. Uh, Mr. President, may I ask that Senator Angara be recognized for the nomination. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Majority Leader, mga ginagalang nakasama. Muli po akong tumatayo, ginoong presidente, para ilahad ang aking nominasyon para sa Majority Floor Leader or Chairman ng Committee on Rules sa ikalabinsyam na kongreso or 19th Congress, ang aking katuwang sa advokasya, sa paglikha ng batas, sa paglaro ng basketball, ang ating, aking kumpadre at malapit na kaibigan, no less than Senator Joel Testaman Villanueva. Una pong naging leislador si Senator Villanueva bilang party list representative ng Citizens Battle Against Corruption or SIBAC party list. Nagsilbi po siya sa Kamara de Representante mula 2002 hanggang 2010 kung saan naging kasamahan niya ang karamihan ng ating uh, senador ngayong 19th Congress. Si Senator Allen, Senator Cheese, uh, the Senate President, Senator Risa, and myself. Senator Cynthia Villar as well. Sa panahong yun, nagsilbi siyang Minority Leader para sa Commission on Appointments as well as Deputy Minority Floor Leader sa plenario. Nagsulong siya ng mga resolusyon para tutukan at maimbestigahan ang iba't ibang aligasyon ng katiwalian na nagaganap di umano sa mga transaksyon ng gobyerno. Naging may akda din siya ng Anti-Red Tape Act of 2007 at ng Freedom of Information Act. After ably serving three terms in the House of Representatives, Senator Villanueva was appointed by President Benigno Noy Noy Aquino III as Secretary of the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, or TESDA. With him at the helm, TESDA managed to eliminate irregularities in its regulatory functions, which led to the closure and suspension of several airing training centers across the country. TESDA achieved a zero notice of disallowance from the Commission on Audit, or COA. TESDA earned a nationwide ISO certification, a first among the country's education agencies and second in the entire executive branch. He introduced 
innovative programs such as the free online programs and mobile training laboratories. He fostered closer industry partnerships with led, which led to higher employability of our tech book graduates, among many others. In our opinion, his most important contribution at the time was to raise the profile of TESTA and technical vocational education in the minds of our people. He himself became a certified barista, a skill that may <laughs> prove to be useful in the new role he is about to occupy in the Senate for those late nights with you, Mr. President. We are hoping TESTA can once again soar to those same heights under him and help our countrymen during these tough times for our people. His performance in TESTA, Mr. President, was so exemplary. It gave him that high national profile to help win a Senate seat in 2016 with the second highest number of votes among all the candidates at 18.4 million votes. And throughout his first term as senator, he was tireless as he chaired the committees on labor, employment, and human resources development, as well as higher technical and vocational education. He authored and co-authored critical pieces of legislation, such as the Doctor Para Sabayan Law, the Tulong Trabaho Law, the First Time Job Seekers Act, the Ladderized Education or the Philippine Qualifications Framework Act, the Occupational Safety and Health Standards Law, the Telecommuting or Work From Home Law, and the Free College Tuition or the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education, UACTEA Act, among many others, especially the creation or upgrading of uh, state universities and colleges, Mr. President. Lagi pong sinasabi ni Senator Joel Villanueva na ang trabaho niya bilang legislador ay tiyaking walang panahong mawawalan ng oportunidad para sa trabaho, kabuhayan, at kita ang bawat Pilipino. Sigurado po kami na ipagpapatuloy niya ito sa kanyang pangalawang termino dito sa Senado. Naniniwala po kami na bukod dito, malaki ang may tutulong niya para siguraduin tumatakbo ng tama ang proseso ng paglilikha ng batas dito sa ating institusyon at mabibigyan ng sapat na pagkakataon ng bawat senador sa mayorya, sa minorya man o sa independent black man sila nakahanay. He is a loving husband to Mrs. Gladys Cruz Villanueva and a father to two young children. Kaya, Ginoong Presidente, malugod kong inihaharap ang aking nominasyon para sa posisyon ng Majority Floor Leader ng Senado sa darating ng Kongreso, ang ating kaibigan at seatmate kay Senator Joel Emmanuel Joel Testaman Villanueva. Maraming salamat po, mga kasamahan, Mr. President. Maraming salamat, Senator Angara. Majority Leader. Mr. President, may we recognize uh, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa for his nomination speech. Senator De La Rosa, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, my esteemed colleagues, it is my distinct honor to rise today to nominate our distinguished colleague, Senator Joel Tisdaman Villanueva, as the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Rules, also known as BMW, the brother of migrant workers. Mr. Brother President, BMW. <laughs> BMW. Mr. President, Senator Joel has proven to us time and again, that is indeed worthy to be called a public servant in his own right. The hard work of our dear colleague has been constantly recognized beyond these walls of the Senate. In fact, Ortiz Daman has recently been recognized as among 2022's People of the Year by Stargate People Asia Magazine for his contributions to job creation for Filipinos and his campaign for skills training to generate world-class workers in the country. Mr. President, a chairperson of the Committee on Rules is a man who shows up with his untarnished perfect attendance and his consistently notable contributions as a legislator. I can attest that Senator Joel is not only a man who shows up, he is a man who shows up prepared and performs beyond expectation. Even during pandemic, and his period of mourning, kung saan siya ay nagluluksa sa sunod-sunod na pagkawala ng kanyang mahal sa buhay. Employing Ms. Senator Joel's advocacy of matching jobs and skills, it is indeed a perfect match for Senator Joel to lead the Committee on Rules and be our majority floor leader. He has already proven to us that he is the test the man. Now he is also the man for the job. I have only one request sa ating nominee. Please, uh, Senator Joel, see to it that uh, my good friend, Senator Francis Tolentino, will no longer uh, complain about the disappearances of his local bills from the calendar of business. <laughs> that is, yan lang ang kanyang requirement from, uh, from you. 
and uh, <laughs> I therefore. I therefore nominate Senator Joel Villanueva as chairman of the Committee on Rules for the 19th Congress. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Maraming salamat, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa. Mr. President, I believe that the honor also wants to be recognized for his yes. nomination speech. Yes, thank you, um, Majority Floor Leader. And if I may just ins place this on record, I don't want to leave the opportunity not to nominate my dear seatmate and my partner in the Majority Leader uh, Committee on Rules at the last Congress. It is my pleasure to second the nomination of Senator Joel Villanueva as the Chairman of the Committee on Rules for the 19th Congress. Senator Joel has proven himself a capable leader throughout his public service career, holding key roles as Deputy Minority Leader in the 13th Congress and Minority Leader of the Commission on Appointments while he was in the House before serving as the great secretary of TESTA, during which time he emerged as an effective and innovative leader whose work has left a big impact on our country's tech voc sector, as lovingly declared by Ralph Recto in one rally that we were together in in 2016 after Senator Joel Villanueva lengthily uh, mentioned all the distinguished programs that he had placed in TESDA. Sabi po ni Senator Ralph Recto, napagagaling ni Tesdaman, dapat ibalik sa Tesda si Tesdaman. <laughs> Pero nangyari po, nilulok ng taong bayan si Senator Joel Villanueva sa Senado. And ladies and gentlemen, we are richer for it. My dear colleagues, in the last two Congresses, he has not only been a reliable, hardworking, passionate Senator. As I mentioned, he readily and capably taken over the duties of Majority Leader whenever needed. With his experience and knowledge and his passion, I know that Senator Joel Tesdaman Villanueva will serve this August chamber well. We will be behind you, sir. We will support you every step of the way. It is my honor to nominate him as the next chairman of the Committee on Rules. Mr. President, there being no other nominations, I move that we close the period of nomination and elect Senator Joel Villanueva as the Chairman of the Committee on Rules. Is there any objection? The Chair hearing none, the motion is approved. There being no other candidate, the Chair proclaims Senator Joel Villanueva as having been elected as the Chairman of the Committee on Rules under the rules of the Senate. is now our Majority Floor Leader. Congratulations, sir. May I request Senator Villanueva and his family to ascend to the rostrum for the oath taking. Session is Ginoong suspended Pangulo. for. Ah, yes, Mr. President. May we recognize Senator Robin Hood Padilla? Uh, Ginoong Pangulo at sa mga kasamahan ko at sa lupo ng pagpupulong na ito, nais ko lamang pong maging opisyal sa la lathaan ng Senado na ako po ay umiiwas sa pagboto sa majority floor leader. Maraming salamat po. That is placed on record. So may we now suspend session so that Senator Villanueva can come to the podium. We'll now proceed to the oath of office for the majority leader. Please raise your hand and repeat after me. I, I Manuel Joel J. Villanueva, 
Having been elected as Having been elected as chairman of the Committee on Rules Do hereby solemnly swear Do hereby solemnly swear That I will well and faithfully discharge That I will well and faithfully discharge To the best of my ability To the best of my ability The duties of my present position The duties of my present position And of all others I may hereafter hold And of all others I may hereafter hold under the Republic of the Philippines. Under the Republic of the Philippines. And that I will support. That I will support. And defend the Constitution of the Philippines. And defend the Constitution of the Philippines. That I will obey the laws. That I will obey the laws. The legal orders. The legal orders. And decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities. And decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities. And maintain true faith and allegiance to the Republic. And maintain true faith and allegiance to the Republic the Republic of the Philippines the Republic of the Philippines and that I impose this obligation and that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily upon myself voluntarily without mental reservation without mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion so help me God so help me God congratulations thank sir. you May we now proceed with the election of the Secretary of the Senate. Majority Leader. Oh. Mr. President, may I be recognized? Yes, Thank Majority you. Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the distinguished lady from uh, Akbayan wishes to be recognized. May, uh, May she be recognized, Mr. President. May we recognize the distinguished lady, Senator Risa Ontiveros. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. It is my honor. On the part of the minority, to uh, officially make it uh, of record our designation of uh, Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel III as Minority Leader. Senator Pimentel, Mr. President, who is a friend of long standing since our college days in the historic early to late 1980s, a veteran lawmaker, a former Senate President, no less, and I'm sure will make an excellent Minority Leader. Just like his father, the late great Senator Kanene Pimentel, who once served this August Hall as Senate President, then as Minority Leader. I am certain that like his father, and by the way, Mr. President, they will be for the first time the father and son tandem, who would have served both as SP and as Minority Leader. I am certain that Senator Pimentel will help maintain the independence of the Philippine Senate an institution crucial to our democracy, an institution we all hold dear. Dagan salamat, Mr. President, for the record. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished lady senator. And for the record, I am happy that our dear colleague from Cagayan de Oro, my Silingan, is, uh, was nominated and unchallenged as the minority floor leader. And just to go full circle, ladies and gentlemen, I was the majority leader then when your father was the minority leader. So now I have the honor to work with the son as well. For the so for the may, may we recognize yes. uh, Senator Just for the record, Mr. Pimentel. President, I, I accept the uh, challenge and I thank uh, Senator Ontiveros for the nomination. Thank you very much. Thank you. We acknowledge the manifestation of Senator Ontiveros and uh, we put that on record. Thank you very much. May we proceed, majority leader. Yes, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, may I just uh, be allowed to uh, make a very, very short manifestation, Mr. President? Yes. We recognize the Majority Leader for his acceptance speech. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I give all the glory, honor, and praise to our uh, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Nakakataba po ng puso, ginoong Pangulo, nakakahambol, nakaka-inspire ang uh, mga sandaling ito. Hayaan nyo, Mr. President, na... Sa ilang segundo, pasalamatan ko ang aking mga colleagues. Bumoto man sa akin o hindi, 
Maraming salamat, especially to our uh, Senate President, Senator Mig Subiri, for your trust and confidence. To Senator Angara and Senator Bato for the nomination. Really appreciate it. In Luke chapter 12, verse 48, it says, To whom much is given, much is required. I know, Mr. President, that more than a rank, title, or position, I am now receiving a great responsibility. This responsibility is about taking care of this beloved institution, the People's Senate. My predecessor, Senator Zubiri, has so raised the bar for this office and keeping up with will be a constant challenge, but we are ready to learn and to listen. We will burn the midnight oil to live up to the responsibilities. We will not sleep or rest until we finish our job. Kung kailangang magtrabaho, na trabahong kalabaw, o magpakakuba po tayo, nakahanda po tayo kasama ang lahat ng ating staff sa opisina. I've been a point guard in basketball, Mr. President, all my life. And uh, I know that success in any human endeavor requires effort and teamwork. Communication is not only essential but critical in a team. We will ensure that nothing stands in the way of good communication and coordination between our offices. While I consider myself a rookie in this new role, we are not a tabula rasa or a blank slate. We have been with the Rules Committee for a very long time. When I was the Benjamin of the House in 12th Congress, I was elected Assistant Majority Floor Leader along with uh, our Senior Majority Floor Leader, Senator Chis Escudero, and Deputy Majority Leader, then Senator Alan Cayetano. Mr. President, when uh, Senator Chis became our Minority Leader, uh, I, was part of, uh, I was one of his uh, Deputy Minority Leader, and I must say that uh, I lavishly benefited from the guidance of uh, uh, Senator Chi, Senator Alan, especially on how to make the rules serve the best interests of our people. I know that we stand on the shoulders of giants in our attempt to make a difference. And let me say that the past six years were worth more than a doctorate degree because of the mentoring we received from the living legends and the gurus of gurus of this institution. To name a few, si former uh, Senate President Tito Soto, um, Ralph Re Senator Ralph Recto, Senator Frank Drilon, Senator Ping Lacson, among others. I also would like to take this opportunity to, uh, to, in closing, Mr. President, to thank my family, my brother, my sister, my uh, dad, brother Eddie, and most especially my mom and sister, whom I know are watching me right now, for demanding that uh, I always do my best. To honor their memories, I pledge every bit of energy in my body, mind, and spirit to give justice to this responsibility you entrusted to me, dear colleagues. To my wife, Gladys, who is uh, here today with us, um, this role is going to take effort, and I have to admit, extra effort, loves. Ngayon pa lang ay uh, nagpapasalamat na po ako sa kanya dahil sa hirap at ginuhawa, lagi ko siyang kasama, and I love her, and I will always will. In closing, Mr. President, let me say that God bless my life with opportunities. He makes my cup overflow. To praise, honor, and glorify Him forever is the only desire of this representation. Iaalay po natin ang bawat segundo, bawat minuto, at bawat oras ng trabaho natin dito sa Senado upang maparangalan, mapurihan, at madakila at ang dakilang pangalan ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Kaya mga kasama, tara, trabaho na tayo. Maraming salamat, Ginoong Pangulo, at pagpalain tayo lahat ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Maraming salamat and congratulations to our dear Majority Floor Leader. Joint Leader. Mr. President, at this juncture, I move that we proceed with the election of the Secretary of the Senate. So move, Mr. President. There being no objection, the Chair hears none. The motion is approved. We will now proceed with the election of the Secretary of the Senate. Mr. President, for the position of the Secretary of the Senate, may I nominate Attorney Renato N. Bantug, Jr. Attorney Bantug has been with the Senate for 27 years. He has been our Executive Director for Legislation since 2004. He also served as Acting Senate Legal Counsel in 2010 and was the Chief of Staff of the Office of the Senate President from 2013 to 2016. Again, Mr. President, I nominate Attorney Renato Bantug, Jr. as Secretary of the Senate. There being other, there are no other nominations, um, is there any other nomination? Uh, may we ask uh, the lady senator, Senator Visa, uh, to deliver her motion? Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. 
in perhaps uh, a first exercise of uh, the bipartisanship from the part of the minority, I am honored and happy to second the nomination of Attorney Ray Bantug uh, as the Senate Secretary. Attorney Bantug, who has served for over two dozen years uh, here in the Senate, including with great honor and excellence in uh, the former Senate minority uh, in the previous Congress, and whom I am sure will be a worthy lieutenant to the Senate President and the whole leadership of our chamber in upholding the independence of our institution and making sure that we remain as productive as ever in complete faithfulness to the rules of the Senate. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. Daghan kay salamat, ma'am. Majority Leader. Mr. President, there being no other nominations, I move that the period of nomination be closed and that we elect Attorney Renato N. Bantug Jr. as Secretary of the Senate. So moved, Mr. President. There being no objection, the motion is approved. Attorney Renato Bantug Jr. is elected Secretary of the Senate. Congratulations, sir. May I ask Attorney Bantug and his family to ascend to the rostrum for the oath-taking while we take a one-minute suspension. Thank you, sir. I'll proceed with the oath taking of the Senate Secretary. May we ask uh, the Senate Secretary to raise his right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Renato N. Bantug Jr. Having been elected as Having been elected Secretary of the Senate. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well I will well and faithfully discharge. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. The duties of my present position. The duties of my present position. And of all others I may hereafter hold. And of all others I may hereafter hold. Under the Republic of the Philippines. Under the Republic of the Philippines. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines. That I will ob obey the laws and legal orders. That I will obey the laws and legal orders. And decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities. And decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities. And maintain true faith. And maintain true faith. And allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines. And allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines. And that I impose this obligation. And I and that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily, upon myself voluntarily, without mental reservation, without mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Thank you, Secretary. Yes. Um, majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President, at this juncture I move that we now consider proposed Senate Resolution Number 1. Is there any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Consideration of proposed Senate Resolution 1 is now in order. The Secretary will read the title and text of the resolution. Proposed Senate Resolution Number 1. Informing His Excellency, the President of the Philippines, that the Senate has been organized with the election of its officers and that this body has entered upon the exercise of its functions for the first regular session of the 19th Congress of the Philippines. Resolved by the Senate, that His Excellency, the President of the Philippines, be informed that the Senate has been organized with the election of its officers, and that this body has entered upon the exercise of its functions for the first regular session of the 19th Congress of the Philippines. Adopted, Joel Villanueva, Senator. Mr. President, with the consent of the body, Mr. President, I move that we adopt proposed Senate Resolution Number 1. So moved, Mr. President. Is there any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Mr. President, at this juncture, I move that we consider proposed Senate Resolution Number 2. So moved, Mr. President. Is there any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Consideration of the proposed Senate Resolution Number 2 is now in order. The Secretary will read the title of, and text of the resolution. Proposed Senate Resolution Number 2, informing the House of Representatives that the Senate has been organized with the election of its officers and that this body has entered upon the exercise of its functions for the first regular session of the 19th Congress of the Philippines. 
resolved by the Senate that the House of Representatives be informed that the Senate has been organized with the election of its officers and that the body has entered upon the exercise of its functions for the first regular session of the 19th Congress of the Philippines. Adopted, signed, Joel Villanueva, Senator. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we adopt proposed Senate Resolution Number 2. So moved, Mr. President. Is there an objection? The Chair hearing none. The motion is approved. Please proceed. Mr. President, at this juncture, we are in a receipt of a message from the House of Representatives. May I ask the Secretary to read the message for the record? I believe... Uh, the Senate Secretary just re relayed to me that the message has not yet arrived, so we can skip this portion, uh, Your Honor. Let's proceed with the adoption of House Concurrent Resolution. Therefore, Mr. President, I move that we adopt House Concurrent Resolution Number 1. I so move, Mr. President. The Chair, is there any objection? Chair hearing none, the motion is approved. Consideration of House Concurrent Resolution Number 1 is now in order. The Secretary will read the resolution. House Concurrent Resolution Number 1, providing for the Senate and the House of Representatives to hold a joint session to hear the message of the President of the Republic of the Philippines. Resolved by the House of Representatives, the Senate concurring, that both houses, both houses of Congress of the Republic of the Philippines hold a joint session on Monday, July 25, year 2022, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon at the session hall of the House of Representatives to hear the message of the President of the Republic of the Philippines. Adopted, signed, Manuel Jose Manix M. Dalipi, Representative. Mr. President, I move that we consider Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 1. So moved, Mr. President. Is there an objection? There being none, Senate Concurrent, House Concurrent Resolution Number 1 is hereby adopted. Please proceed, Majority. Mr. President, I move that we adopt Senate Resolution Number 1. So moved, Mr. President. Is there any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Consideration of the proposed Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 1 is now in order. The Secretary will read the title and text of the measure. Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 1, creating a joint committee of the Senate and the House of Representatives to notify the President of the Philippines that Congress, now convened for its first regular session of the 19th Congress of the Philippines, is ready to hear his State of the Nation address in a joint session of both houses. Resolved by the Senate, the House of Representatives concurring, that, that the committee of five members of the Senate, appointed by the Senate President, join a committee of the House of Representatives to notify the President of the Philippines that Congress, now convened for its first regular session of the 19th Congress of the Philippines, is ready to hear his State of the Nation address in a joint session of both houses. Adopted, signed, Joel Villanueva, Senator. Mr. President, I move that we adopt Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 1. I so move, Mr. President. Thank you very much, my dear colleague. But before we adopt it, I would like to amend it to six members, as one member would wish to join the five-member delegation. If there being no objection, Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 1 is hereby adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Pursuant thereto, to join the Senate President, I hereby appoint to the Joint Notification Committee on the part of the Senate, Senators Joel Villanueva, Senator Lauren Legarda, Senator Aimee Marcos, Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, and Senator Francis Tolentino. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, before we suspend our session, May I just remind our colleagues to remain in the session hall for a photo session. Also for our colleagues who have not, take, who have not been able to have their individual photographs taken, they may wish to do so until 1 o'clock in the afternoon at the Padilla Room. Mr. President, there being no further business, I move that we suspend the session until 4 o'clock this afternoon, at which time we shall reconvene at the session hall of the House of Representatives to hear the State of the Nation address of President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. in a joint session of both houses of Congress. And when we adjourn the, ses the joint session, the session of the Senate shall be considered adjourned until tomorrow, July 26, 2022, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I so move, Mr. President. There being no objection, the chair hears none, and before I suspend session, I once again want to thank all my colleagues, my dear colleagues, 
maraming maraming salamat sa inyo po. To all the guests, maraming salamat. Now the motion of is approved. Session is suspended until 4 o'clock this afternoon for the joint session of Congress. The members of the Senate are advised to proceed to and be seated at session hall of the House of Representatives by or before 3 p.m. After the joint session, the session of the Senate shall be considered adjourned until tomorrow, July 26, 2022 at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The session is now suspended until 4 o'clock this afternoon.